Today we are starting yet another air source heat pump installation. Another very interesting installation because we have to use this gigantic coil of pipe. Let me show you why. Originally the heat pump was supposed to go here between two buildings. As a matter of fact the unit we are installing is quiet enough to be so close. But it's quite big, it would really restrict the access here. And the owners were worried that even though it complies, it passes the uh, sound assessment, they did not want to have any chances of having the unit disturbing the neighbors. So what they did, they cut this channel, dug 0.7 meters into the ground, and they decided to put the heat pump right here in front of the building. So the unit we are installing is Nibi S2125, and it's a 12 kilowatt unit, which means that it really is 7.3 kilowatt unit. So if heat pumps aren't confusing enough, the rating is even more confusing. We originally quoted for a 7 kilowatt Valent, that Valent spec says uh, at 35 or 40 degrees, 35 and 40 degrees flow, outputs 8.5 kilowatt, which we've learned recently doesn't, it only outputs 5.5 mean output. So uh, it wasn't suitable for this property and we did have issues with 7 kilowatt valence not performing on properties that were actually 7 kilowatts. So if your actual correct heat loss, not overstated heat loss when you calculate it, but the actual correct heat loss of the property is 7 kilowatts, I would not be using a 7 kilowatt from valence. I would use it to maximum 6 kilowatt uh, heat loss. This property is over 7 kilowatt heat loss, so we have to use, again, 12 kilowatt unit, which really is in 12 because at minus three, where we uh, temperature we design here, it's really 7.3, maybe 7.4 kilowatt uh, output. Where do those different numbers and figures come from and why is Nibi telling us 12 kilowatt output on this unit when it really is slightly over seven? Why is Valiant telling us 8.5 on seven when it's really 5.5? This comes from a uh, unit being named from peak output, so what it can actually reach. Uh, as a maximum at design temperature and mean output, which is what it averages over a longer period of time when it's really cold. Because the units will go to defrost, they will have to uh, stop providing heat to the property for around five, maybe six minutes. And also they have to recover the energy they pulled out from the property, which results in a situation where uh, a unit like this one that can peak at 12 kilowatts uh, on average at minus three will provide between seven and a half, maybe eight kilowatt output maximum. Uh, so we need some standardized methods of uh, budging units. Not only, you know, if you, you shouldn't have to dig into the manual to find out what the actual output is, including defrosts. And even if you do, a lot of manufacturers give outputs that don't seem to reflect the reality once they are installed. I understand it's really hard to test those units in laboratory conditions when, you, when it comes to real life. Houses are different. Uh, they need to provide different outputs for the houses. The more output they have to provide, the more often they will go to defrost. Uh, flows are different, that will affect defrost as well. And design temperatures are different. Uh, but it's kind of tricky to size the heat pumps correctly and they have to be sized pretty accurately if a lot of figures we are provided by manufacturers, they really have to be verified. I didn't say they can't be trusted. They have to be verified. Okay. Stop. This is where the fun starts. We need to push it all the way in and position it in place so it comes nice and close to the wall so this gas pipe is in the way so I'm gonna get rid of it. We are disconnecting this property from the gas now and moving in truly to the electric era of the 21st century. Right, so this pipe is not only difficult to install because it's so rigid, it's also really difficult to remove the insulation uh, from the pipe work. Not the nicest stuff to work with, but probably the only solution if you do have to go underground. Size for this job is 32 mil, which is equivalent of 28 mil copper. Don't shout at me for putting 12 kilowatt unit on 28 mil copper. I can hear some of you saying it should be 35. It could be, but the plant room is just right here behind this wall. And then we've got 28 mil 
pipe work that we are installing going upstairs and splitting to three different parts of the house you will see that even on 2000 liters per hour flow as long as you use high flow diverter valves and you know how the rest of the pipe work behind the diverter valve in the heating uh, is designed you're completely fine and the beauty of Nibi, that unit is, is that you have external circulator. So if, if you have to put a bigger circulator, you can. Here we've got a little plant room. That big underground pipe we just put into the ground is on the other side of this wall. And this is where the new plant room will go. Uh, there's a kitchen extension. That extension has an underflow heating setup that you can see here, which is a bit suspect because uh, the area, floor area of that uh, kitchen is well over 20 meters and we only have uh, one look so either it's really wide spacing or there is more pipe than 100 meters way more uh, not a big deal because that underfloor heating is right where the main pipe work comes in from the heat pump and we will most likely be buffering this system anyway because we have some radiators on microbore as well. When it comes to heating pipe work, there used to be two 22 millimeters pipes going all the way up and then they actually reduced to 15 mil before they split to all different places in the house. And for the ground floor, they do come back down in 22 millimeters. So we'll be upgrading a bunch of pipe work there. We cannot run this setup even with the buffer through 15 mil uh, pipe work. We'll have a look at it later when we go upstairs, lift the boards up and upgrade that part of a uh, heating setup. Plant room's in, ready for testing, pressure testing, and we've left space for a buffer that we're supposed to install, but it never arrived. So we're gonna give it a go without a buffer. We need a flow rate of around 1400 liters to cover eight kilowatts at DT5, but we also have to allow for defrost, so we need slightly more. So if we allow for nine kilowatts flow rate, which is about 1500 liters per hour, if we achieve that flow rate without a buffer, then we are fine. We also upgraded a bunch of pipe work upstairs to make it easier. So what is happening here is a 28 millimeters pipe work or, or equivalent in composite pipe work comes to the plant room and immediately it goes to underfloor heating. So we're getting part of the load already split to the kitchen. Then those two pipes flow and return on the right with the gate valve. I'll explain what that gate valve does in a second. They go upstairs and they split to 22 millimeters downstairs and 22 millimeters upstairs pipe work. So the last is 28 uh, millimeters splitting to two parts of the house. And now for the moment of truth, what is the flow rate? We can see it on monitoring. I'm going to post a link below so you can have a look for yourself. 9th of April, so we'll see. We're not lying because it's all being recorded what the flow rate is. We also have this fill and flash valve down here. And it also has kind of very basic uh, flow meter on it that we can have a look at immediately. So we need 1500 liters per hour for the system to perform correctly. And if we look per minute, then we need, what is it, 1500 divided by 60, 25 liters a minute. This very basic flow meter shows around 26 liters per minute. So we're already achieving 1500 liters per hour, which is great. On the monitoring, we can see 27.88 liters a minute, which means we're getting almost 1700 running with no separation. Two things though, I need to check if this underfloor heating here, which we completely removed the uh, pumping station and just connected direct with a gate valve if we have to uh, balance it, and one microbore radiator on the end of the house. Uh, we need to check it with clamps or thermal camera and see if this gets flow rate and the last rad go, a radiator gets, and if the last radiator gets flow rate, because if they do, we're fine. We don't need any separation. And seeing the flow rate, I don't think we will. So the unit is now running, and those units are they're super quiet. I think they rated at 49 decibels, nominal, not maximum, but it's still quieter by about five decibels if you compare it to most so called quiet units on the market. And it is a propane unit, which is R290. And what's very, very nice about it is it does not require safety zone or exclusion zones. You can put it next to a door. You can put it next to a vent. You can put an isolator switch like we did below the top of the unit. 
and it's fine because on the back here, this additional box that you can see here, which has a kind of, uh, looks like a large auto air vent valve that is supposed to disperse that propane safely in case uh, there is a leak. So maybe ahead of the game, I know the other manufacturers are trying to create units that are propane and will not require exclusion zones or safety zones. Nibi has already done it. This system has been now running for 24 hours. And the question is, is it working correctly? Do we get circulation everywhere we need it? I've got temp clamps on the pipe work, so I know what the DT difference between flow and return is. And it's pretty similar to the whole system DT, so I'm getting correct flow through under for heating. We're going to confirm that with a thermal camera in a second. And if it needs any adjusting, one gate valve here and a gate valve on the return from the radiators as well. I love gate valves. The cheap and effective way of controlling flow and they do have great authority. What it means, you can adjust the flow at small increments and they don't act like an on-off valve because if they did, well, it would be useless. So I find gate valves very useful for balancing flow on high flow heat pump uh, setups. Under for heating is working fine. You can see it on the thermal camera, we've confirmed that with the flow, with clamp meters as well. How about that microbore pipework on that one radiator? Amazingly, this radiator on microbore works fine. We know by comparing flow and return temperatures that there is enough flow. We can see that the uh, mean water temperature is around 24, 25 degrees, comparable to other radiators. That's external pipework going to that little plant room. Married it really nice uh, primary pro around the pipework. Behind the heat pump, we also have really neatly done primary pipework on pipes and flexible hoses going uh, to the unit. That unit has an interesting uh, drain on the back for, for condense. It doesn't drip below the unit, it's actually on the back, so kind of unusual. One thing that surprised me most about this unit is when we connected it to the monitoring, there's something called power input, like minimum power that the compressor can run at. And this 12 kilowatt unit modulates its power input for a compressor alone, excluding circulators, to 300 watts, which is just crazy. If you look at other manufacturers, if you look at Valen, their 10 kilowatt unit probably can only modulate power input to 900 watts. Anything below that, it can't run. Uh, same goes for Daikins, like seven, eight kilowatt Daikins. I think they run at like 900 watts minimum power input. So what happens, they will run for a short period of time when it's warmer weather and just shut off. This unit does not cycle right now. It's been running for almost two days now. It doesn't cycle with 10 degrees outside. So this unit should be really popular in the UK, simply because it provides around eight kilowatt output at minus three degrees. That's mean water output, that's average output over a longer period of time at the design. It's called 12 kilowatt, but that's peak output. And it's single fan. Units from most manufacturers to provide that output are much bigger or they are double fan units. So this should be super, super popular. If you want to learn more about heat loss, we actually have a video about it. And I'm gonna leave a link to it for you right here.